Hey everybody, what's crafting? It's Sai from Happy Accident Studios, and today I am doing my first ever craft show haul video. On Saturday, my friend Wendy and I went to the Make It Show in Farnborough, and I kind of bought a few things. Yeah, shh, don't tell my husband, yeah, but it's our secret, okay? Right, so I thought I'd share with you what I bought, because that's kind of what everybody does when they go out, if they're really obsessed with the type of things that they buy and guess what I am so here we go um, my first purchase was kind of a mundane one um, but it, it doesn't look like much but this is called a rock -a block it's um, it's a stamping block basically you, you lay your stamp on here and it clings to it and then instead of the traditional way of just stamping down and up again you roll it instead and the um, going theory is that it gets a better coverage so I'm gonna give it a go and see how I get on with it um, they, this particular one came in a packet with this long one I needed quite a big one you see how big it is almost the size of my head um, this one I bought because I specifically have coverage issues with my larger background stamps so I thought I'll just get this gigantic one but it happened to come with this no idea what I'm gonna do with this one yet probably um, stick alphabet stamps on it to make titles or something do my eyes look funny through this I can't see anyway rock blocks in the bag um, next off, um, last year sometime, I actually tried out a new kind of spray ink. Now, I I love all of the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists and all the various different brands that you get, but I was getting a little frustrated with clogging issues. I don't know if any of you out there actually use mica sprays and have found a way to properly store the bottles and avoid clogging, but um, at the moment I am in damage control mode and I am declogging my sprays every single time I have to use them and it's getting frustrating but I've noticed that um, Dilutions which is by Ranger they have um, just an ink spray that doesn't actually have the sparkly mica in it and I thought they'd be quite useful for a lot of applications so last year for my birthday I picked up a couple of sprays I brought um, I think a pink one and a green one and I really, really loved the effects, and I, I just really enjoyed the ease of use and everything. So, when I walked past the stall at Alley Crafts, I noticed that they had a little group purchase deal on. So, I fished through, and I got lots. <laughs> well, six. Is six lots? I don't know. But I got cherry pie, which I'm hoping is kind of a pinkish red. And squeezed orange. They're going to look quite nice together. Oh, and they're the same colors in my logo. I wonder what I'm going to do with them. And is this another squeezed orange? <laughs> I thought this was a different color, so I bought it twice. Oops. Anybody want a squeezed orange? Um, this one is pure sunshine, and it looks quite dark in the bottle, but that's probably because it's going to be yellow, or at least that's what I hope. We'll find out. Uh, here is Vibrant Turquoise, which is the closest thing I think I could get to a blue. No, I actually intended to use turquoise when I bought this. It was this one that was the closest I could find to a blue in the, in the non-mica selection that they had. This is called Calypso Teal, and hopefully I will be making some videos and showing you what I do with all that in the near future. Also, have you ever been to a craft show and you know something exists and you ask around for it and everybody looks at you like you've got two heads? This has happened to me on so many occasions I can't even tell you, okay? But what happens is, when I ask for these things, about six months to a year later, all of a sudden, it's everywhere, okay? And it's happened to me with gilding flakes and it's happened to me with so, so many things, but this is the latest one. white ink spray. I've seen it used everywhere. People are blobbing it all over their craft paper based projects and it looks really nice. But for some reason, nowhere seems to sell it and I don't know where everybody's getting it from. So I happened to be walking past and what did I see but a Heidi Swap white spray. 
So I am now the proud owner of said white spray, and hopefully I shall be making use of it in, an, in a future video. See, this is all for you, you know. I don't shop for me, I shop for you. This is all so that I can show you what I do with it. Aren't you pleased? Right, let me move all this out of the way. Ah, this is going to be exciting. I have got, and this is another thing that I did actually get some two-headed looks from. I was asking around for a jelly plate. Now, I've seen a lot of people using jelly plates. If you look at any mixed media, craft, anything, you will see jelly plates mentioned. And yet, everywhere I went, what? Jelly what? No. Except for Alleycraft. Thank you, Alleycraft, for this. Now, this is not a jelly plate. This is the Stampendous Creative Palette Monto Mono Printing Plate. Mono, mon, mono Printing Plate. And the first thing I noticed about it was that it was a lot thinner than I expected it to be. So we shall see how we get on with that. Um, in have I said this before? A future video. Yes, there will be future videos with all this stuff in it. And if not, you can you can come get me and and make me do it. Right. Next, um, I was just kind of thinking, oh, what do I need that I keep seeing being used and I never really happen to pick any up. Well, this is treasure gold. This is a very smelly <laughs> wax product that actually has in it this metallic stuff. And you basically rub it on raised areas or wherever you want just a little bit of a glint of something. And, whew, oh, yeah, that smells. Um, and I've seen everybody with it. It comes in lots of different colors now. And I just, I thought if, I, if I'm going to use it, I'm probably going to use copper. So that's what I ended up getting, treasure copper. And it just happened to be right at the till when I bought all those inks. Yeah, convenient. <laughs> I think they know what they're doing. Um, next up, you know, I've been quite boring. Usually I will come home with a treasure trove of of stamps and cutting dies and all that, but just none of that made its way into my shopping bag this time, but I did go a bit mad on paper. So here is my my first one. These these were um, bigger, but I've been flipping through because I am a woman on a mission. My friend, Nair, is having a baby shower soon, and she and I worked together and picked out a um, color scheme for it. So I've been looking around for all the patterned papers and cardstock that fit this color scheme, and one of them is this blank canvas 12 by 12 pad. Normally it does cost $14.99, and it was down to $6.99, which is really good. And similar reductions on all of the paper pads in that range at this particular stall. So I also picked up New Leaf. New Leaf doesn't have quite as many of the colors that fit into her color scheme as the other one did. But I think between the two of them, I've got enough to uh, make a good start on her decorations, invitations, and all that fun stuff. More paper, yes. I thought since they were reduced, I thought I would treat myself to some of the papers that I thought about getting but just didn't want to spend all that money on. And so I found these two little 6x6 six six pads, Birdsong and Spring Feast. And they're both kind of a pink and green sort of dusky kind of um, theme. They're both pretty similar and I do like those colors together so I picked them both up for myself. We'll see if I end up sharing them with anyone else. But for now, all mine. Um, and finally, oh no, not finally, there's more, there's more. Um, I did go a bit ink mad. I have the ink spray now and the treasure gold and now I also have four new ink pads that go right along with my friend's selected color scheme for her party. So I ended up with um, Pebble, which is a very, sort of a bit browny gray, and Espresso, which is a dark brown. And I also got two Adirondack colors. This salmony pink called Mountain Rose. This one. Not this one. 
this one mountain rose and this one is called peach bellini so they go quite nice together with the brown and the gray and they make sort of a good neutral baby theme it's not too girly and it's not all blue for a boy so it's gonna look great um also impulse buys the minute i saw this i knew i had to have it this is um this is a stencil or some people call it a mask but really a mask and a stencil are just opposites of each other and they're made out of the same stuff so i would call this a stencil and this one is by crafters workshop and the designer is julie fay fan balzer and i have seen her work and it's fantastic and i've also seen the larger version of of this stencil being used and i fell in love with it then and i finally found it in the mini version which is all the the ones that I have. They're all this size because they fit quite nicely into a little binder and I only ever stencil small areas. So perfect, right? Oh, <laughs> you're gonna like this one, right? So I went to this stall called Ross Paper, right? And um, they had some stencils. They were two pounds each or I think it was four for five pounds or something like that. So I found a couple that I really liked. Um, the Brick and these handprints, which work very nicely with my own logo, and also this fabulous barbed wire. I'm really looking forward to using all this. But the one that I just could not resist getting, and I had to buy it, if only to prove that it exists, because it is a pole dancer. Oh yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can actually buy stencils of pole dancers so this will be perfect for uh congratulations on your new job card maybe i don't know if you have any ideas on how to use the pole dancer stencil please comment down below i would love to know what you think um oh let's see we've got some incidental purchases as well i just happened to see one of those um, rotating racks that had named objects on them. Do you know what I mean? Personalized things for children who have common names. My full name is Sarita. No one has that name except maybe like 400 people on Facebook. But it's not enough for somebody to make products like mugs or anything that have my name on it. So I don't get this. So every time I see it, my kids who have extraordinarily normal names get their own personalized goodies and um the craft show was no exception cameron and victoria are my kids and now they each have a ruler with their name on it isn't that exciting <laughs> anyway that um that might be it oh no no what do you get the girl that has everything something to put it in am i right well i was lucky enough to be passing by a great company called storage for crafts when i was at this show and they have all kinds of things they make furniture that specifically is made for the storage boxes that are out on the market and they also have these sort of i would call them less expensive versions um and they're just perfectly sized for craft this one uh, this is just um, a slightly bigger than 12 by 12. Oh, can you see my computer? Hello! Um, it's slightly bigger than than 12 by 12 plastic box. It's just a box. There's nothing amazing about it except that it is exactly the right size for me to carry things around in. So I bought three of them. And really, uh, besides a little bit of ribbon, which I actually can't find at the minute, that is what I bought at the Make It Show in Farnborough. Um, if you're at all interested in going to the show, it is quite good. This year, it was a combination of paper crafting and there was like a knitting, embroidery, crochet kind of needle craft, fiber craft type of offering there as well. However, I do have to say, if you had gone specifically for the fiber craft and the knitting and crochet and embroidery and all that you may have been a bit disappointed because i i would estimate just by walking around that the paper craft versus the fiber craft was about 75 25 and if you paid the full ticket price and you weren't exactly interested in all the paper things then i think you probably would have been a little disappointed but next year who knows you know 
they may have um, they may have more people coming. You never really know with the Make It Show. Um, it keeps expanding. There's different things every time, as far as I'm aware. Um, Farnborough is quite an easy place to get to. It's just off the M3, and the venue is called Five. It's near the airport. It's quite near Farnborough Airport, and um, it's quite a spacious place. It's got uh, I know it. You know who's who, I'm talking about this on camera. There's plenty of toilets. Yes, toilets. It's very important when you're shopping to have toilets. But also, um, I found that the food area was, there was a good variety of food there, and there was also, it was reasonably priced, and plenty of seating. So really, it's what, you know, that's an important thing if you're going to stay all day, that you have somewhere to rest your feet and your hands. Um, I know I felt a bit like a pack mule about halfway through, and I had this really heavy bag, and it was cutting ribbons it just in my in my skin and I had to sit down I must have spent half the show sitting down um but luckily um due to good management I suppose I had no problem finding a seat whenever I wanted one um it was good we uh, met some of some crafters that don't really meet up that often because we are just so spread out my little group um, so I, I got to see Lynn. Hello, Lynn, if you're watching. I got to see Lynn. She lives a long way away. I don't actually know where it is. I know what the town's called, but I don't know where it is. Um, because my geography's rubbish. Anyway, um, I got to meet up with Lynn, and I made a new friend who came there with Lynn, and, um, that's great. Hi, Claire, if you're watching. And, uh, of course, Wendy and I had to compare notes, and, uh, yeah. Congratulations, Wendy. You've beat me at shopping yet again. Um, I did have a fantastic day. I don't know when the next one is. I'm so sorry about that. But if you Google Make It Farnborough, that's F-A-R-N-B-O-R-O-U-G-H, you will be able to find out when the next one is. And um, I'd say if you're into paper crafting, scrapbooking, multimedia, any kind of thing like that, then it is definitely worth shopping. Definitely. Um, it's a good. It's a good day out. And there are workshops as well that you can book. So, definitely recommend it. And uh, who knows, I might be there next year. So, check this space. If I am going, I will let you guys know. And if anybody wants to meet up, we could do that, couldn't we? We could just say, oh, I want to meet Cy from Happy Accident Studios. And then maybe we can all say, okay, I'm going to meet at this table at this time. And, hey, it would be cool. It would be good to put faces to the subscribers, you know. Anyway, um, speaking of subscribers, it's really nice to have you here, and um, if you haven't already subscribed, there's a button down there. If you'd like to see more of me or my crafty exploits, then please do press that button and subscribe to my channel. Um, I have been Sai. This has been Happy Accident Studios. You can find me at face, um, facebook.com forward slash happy accident studios, no spaces. I am also on Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram at HapAx Studios. And my new YouTube URL is youtube.com slash user slash Studios. Come back soon, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.